we were talking about trauma and how like the body keeps the score mm-hmm. and these ideas that early um early experiences can have a long lasting effect on your psyche mm-hmm. and your body. Yeah. And some people think it's woo woo, but there's enough anecdotal evidence out there yeah. that it kind of makes sense. And they have done studies, you know, with like, and my audience has heard this, but maybe yeah. someone hasn't. It's um, when they did the study with the, ra- the rats or the mice and mm-hmm. to the mother, they would introduce an electric shock and then a cherry blossom scent. So they associated the pain with the cherry blossom. Mm-hmm. So the pups that came out when they would uh, smell, smell cherry blossoms had had a reaction like they were anticipating pain so, so that through epigenetics we know it works there so it's not crazy and it's not as woo as it kind of sounds no, um yeah. we i listened to your recent episode on circumcision and i was really <laughs> uh-huh. excited that you were yeah. talking about it because i think that for a long time most people thought it's just something that you do right it's right. no second thought to it oh my um, gosh it's like an epidemic in the u.s it, like it just became like the thing it's just the thing and then you're <laughs> we are taught to shame people that are intact yeah and that's gross ew why didn't you do that but then yeah. you realize that a, a third of the world is cut the rest yeah. is not so it's, it's actually like a, not normal no and I learned that. Well, okay, right? S- talking about religion, it mm-hmm. is the oldest surgery in the world, mm-hmm. right? Like, that is what circumcision is. It's like one of the oldest surgeries in history. And it's so interesting because I started dating my husband. I started making friends from other countries. I realized very quickly that the U.S. was a very small fraction of what is actually happening in the world and that majority of countries, like most Europe, most like of South America, they're all uncircumcised Mm -hmm. and have zero problems with it. And also when I met these people would make jokes about how every like U.S. kid, like it was like the U.S. is like that's the thing. And they were like, it's not really one way or another i mean if you're religious about it like and you want to do it that's fine but like it's really just like driven so you're by more insurance. you're more accepting than i am with that so i i got myself into a rabbit hole and i actually learned a lot from your podcast that i didn't yeah. find in my own research but i always thought that it was to keep it clean and to help with okay. infections later and stds yep. and I was listening to this podcast. Um, it was Alex Clark's Spillover, and she oh had my this God. guy. I on. Love Did you listen to that one? <laughs> yes. So he was saying, so to circle back to trauma, there's a conversation around something as simple as sleep training, and that will get yep. people up in arms. Like that is going to ruin your child into child. A, into yep. adulthood. Mm-hmm. So if something is non-violent as that. And then you compare circumcision, which is no oh. anesthesia. It's not a very quick procedure. No. There's a good amount that do have complications after. Uh, this it's guy like 25% was, have complications. Which with most their mothers would have no idea. Yeah, no. It's because it's like a non-informed consent. Not informed consent. When do we ever get informed consent? And really, not as, often, especially as a woman going oh, through like yeah. pregnancy, you rarely get it. No. But he was saying that um, when a boy gets circumcised, it's his first dissociative experience because as a baby, you oh can't God. move, you can't talk, you can't protest. So you have to dissociate from your body to escape the pain because there is an immense amount of pain and that that is actually one of the most traumatic things that we can do. And it leads to dysfunction sexually and like the mm-hmm. relationship that we have with sex. And then in the episode i learned that um it really started getting pushed during the victorian era because they thought Mm -hmm. that masturbation and sex were the reason to blame for everything like you it would make you go blind it was the reason that you were sick it was the reason that society was falling apart so they Mm -hmm. said if we desensitize this part of the male body and they even were doing to some females that will cure everything and the guy in the podcast is like obviously it worked (laughs) you know right Mm -hmm. i just i my conclusions after learning everything that i had about circumcision was that it was exploitation Mm -hmm. of the child like and that sounds like i think that's like people will get up in arms about that but like that's what i came to like it is exploitation. Is it, is it genital mutilation? Like, why is it for a girl and not a boy? So when it, people right. are like, okay, well, if it's for a religion, well, they're Muslims. There are p- plenty of them that still do female genital mutilation. And that's part of their culture and part of their religion. So do we say that that's acceptable because it's right. part of their And I say no. Adamantly, I, I say no. And, I would stand on that hill. Right. And it's like 
no. yes, like that is more extreme than a circumcision, but it's it's adjacent. 